On today's Apple Daily, don't expect many options at the Apple Silicon checkout. MagSafe updates. Meanings hidden in Apple's event announcement image. Apple Silicon Gaming with iCave Answers. This is the Apple Daily. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. First up, don't expect too many options when you check out for your Apple Silicon Mac. Now, the only reason I'm talking about this, we have done a full video on Apple Silicon and the simplicity that it's going to bring to Apple, hopefully. Um, I remember someone was talking on one of the podcasts that I listened to the other day about bringing back Steve Jobs for product grid, which I think we've talked about in the past on that video. And when Steve Jobs returned to Apple in the late 90s, he created this grid of four products, which was a consumer and a pro column, a notebook and a desktop version. You had the iBook and the PowerBook, and then you had the iMac and the PowerMac. So those were the, the kind of four categories of product because they'd just got this sprawl and it looked like a Dell website or something where you'd got Optiplex and Pr Proma and all this weird kind of names that didn't really mean anything. So they just kind of stripped everything back, made it all more simple. Now I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen with the Apple Silicon line. So right now when you buy a MacBook Pro 16 inch, for example, you will get the option of what processor would you like, what RAM amount would you like, what storage amount would you like, and then do you want to add a graphics card, do you want to upgrade the internal graphics card. Um, I don't think any of that's going to happen with Apple Silicon. I think you're going to go, MacBook Pro, do I want 13 inch or 16 inch, Do uh, how much storage do I want, and that's it. And then you will get the 2020 or the 2021 MacBook Pro with the amount of storage that you want. That's going to be the way that it comes. There may well be a processor difference between the 13 inch model and the 16 inch model because the 16 inch model will have more cooling capacity, more battery capacity, all that sort of stuff. But again, there might not even be that because with Apple Silicon, the cooling is probably not going to be a massive issue. So you don't need the extra cooling. It might just be that the 16 inch one has a bigger screen. It might be like buying an iPad Pro where you get the, the 11 inch version or the 12.9 inch version and it does the same thing. It's just got a bigger screen and a bigger battery in it. That could be the way that it works and that would please me no end. I don't think consumers, the vast majority of consumers know how much difference a processor upgrade is going to make versus an SSD upgrade versus a RAM upgrade to their experience. So I think it makes far more sense for Apple to control the whole thing and go, here is the best MacBook Pro that we do. Choose your screen size, choose your storage, and we'll send it to you. So that is the way that I expect it to come. There may be different SKUs, therefore, in, in iMac, for example. Maybe you'll have the 24-inch iMac and the 30-inch iMac when that arrives. They both have the same processor. Or you can have an iMac Pro, which has the better processor. Maybe they'll only make that in the bigger size, but they could make it in both, probably, in, in all honesty. So maybe that's the way that we're going to go. And I would really like it if they do. A lot of the comments, a lot of the comments on the videos are like, what will the base configuration be? The base configuration will be the configuration. It's only like when you buy an iPhone and you go 64 gigabytes, 128 or 256. It's going to be maybe 256, 512 or one terabyte internal. Or if you really want to go high, you can go up to the four and the eights, which uh, Apple started doing on the Intel Macs. But I just want to temper people's expectations. I expect that that's how it will go. I don't know. Uh, I don't think you're going to have upgradable RAM. I don't think you're going to have upgradable anything really once you've bought it. I think it's just going to be that's what you've bought and then you sell it on like you do with an iPad when it's not any good for you anymore or when you want to upgrade. I think that's what we're going to get. Next up, MagSafe updates. I think you'll agree that MagSafe was one of the most interesting parts of the iPhone presentation. The idea of moving over from plugging your phone in every time to using a magnetic charging puck uses all the technology of Qi, but allows you to pick your phone up while it's charging and all that sort of thing, makes life a little bit more convenient, and also a range of accessories that go along with that. Now, a couple of little updates to this. First of all, the MagSafe Duo, uh, which was the folding kind of travel charger that Apple debuted that has the 
iPhone charger with MagSafe on the one side and the Apple Watch charger that flips up on the other side. It's already passed the Korean version of regulatory filings, so it is on the way. Production models must be out there somewhere that are being used. So perhaps we could see this being announced with a shipping date. In addition, iPhone 12 mini has got a slightly different way of using the MagSafe because of its smaller battery and its smaller size. So it will only charge up to 12 watts instead of 15 watts. Uh, which is what the uh, the rest of the iPhone range will do. I would guess it's a heat dissipation issue, but I wouldn't worry too much because the smaller battery means that it will probably still charge in about the same length of time. Hidden meanings in Apple's event announcement logo. So, oh, I've got it on my screen here. As soon as this came out, I've got to say it really reminded me of the of the image that you get as a backdrop for Snow Leopard. The Snow Leopard announcement stuff that was used on the DVDs and all that sort of stuff, the, the kind of star field that we used to have. And the first thing that sprung to mind for me was, are we gonna get a startup video? Which is what the, you used to get when you opened up a Mac for the first time. Uh, it was in all of the versions, I think, up until about Lion. Um, and it would give you like a welcome video and welcome in different languages would fly at you through this kind of star field. And it was like an introduction. It kind of made it quite special when you open up your Mac for the first time. And I would love to see that sort of thing come back to uh, Apple Silicon with Big Sur. I think that would be a really nice thing. It would be nostalgic for people that remember it from before. It would be exciting, I think, for people that haven't. It's kind of a little wow when you open up the computer. Like, it's not a feature. It's a lovely little welcome to your new computer from Apple. But the other thing that I think is because it plays full screen and it's kind of seamless and everything like that, it just kind of sets Apple away from things like Windows, because I seem to remember when Windows launched up, you would get like a help window that popped up with a little video inside it that you could play if you wanted to, and it was like, that was Windows trying to do the same thing, I think. And it's just, it's not the same. Um, this would be really nice. So that was my first thought when I saw this. Next up, uh, the rainbow thing, and this is, some of this stuff is coming from the comments that people have left down below, but someone was saying, especially with the AR version of it, with that light coming from around the edges, it looks like it might be around a uh, RGB backlit keyboard. That doesn't sound very Apple, but actually, Apple has filed patents recently uh, around multicolored LEDs as a backlight for a keyboard, so it could actually be the case that as you open up your Mac, you get that kind of flash of light that comes through and pops out the sides. That would be a really nice kind of cool little feature for them to have. Um, one of the other things that it made me think of, and this is actually my thought straight away, is I think we're going to get colours on the MacBooks. So in the way that we've got um, insanely subtle colours on the iPads, hopefully they'll go a little bit stronger and more towards the kind of iPhone colours. I would love to see some uh, anodized MacBooks coming out in different colors. A product red MacBook would be awesome. You know, greens, that Pacific blue for the Pros maybe. Maybe the Pros will get the same color schemes as the iPhone Pros and the regular MacBooks or the MacBook Airs will get the same color schemes as the iPhones. That could be quite a cool uh, thing for them to do. But let me know in the comments. Obviously with the iPhone Pro stuff, they are on stainless steel and glass. So there might be some differences there. It could be that they're using the same frosted glass on the back of the iPhone Pros as the palm rests in the MacBooks, which would be great because A, it'd look really cool, and B, you could have an even bigger trackpad, and C, you could maybe MagSafe charge through it. And iCave Answers, if you want to get a question answered on the show, use hashtag iCave Answers down in the comments and I will answer it on the show for you. Uh, Pixelated Games asks, what do you think about gaming on the Mac when people start to buy Apple Silicon Macs? Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool, actually. So we've already seen at WWDC, we saw Apple playing Legend of the to Tomb Raider or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, whatever it's called. I think I got it wrong on the last video. Sorry about that. But it looks pretty awesome. So gaming on Apple Silicon Macs, I think we're going to see most of the games that are currently running on Intel Macs will work on Apple Silicon Max from day one using uh, Rosetta 2. So that's a great start. As soon as developers start to bring their games over natively, you will see slightly better performance, uh, but by all accounts, Rosetta 2 is doing a great, great job of bringing stuff over to the Mac on Rosetta 2. 
and in most cases it seems to actually be running just as well on there as it would on an Intel Mac, if not better. Part of that is because Rosetta 2 runs at install time, so you translate your app once and then it runs natively under Apple Silicon from then on. In addition to that, you're going to get all of the games that are already on iOS and iPad come straight to the Mac. So you'll be able to play things like Call of Duty Mobile, you'll be able to play PUBG Mobile, you'll be able to play all of those mobile games on your Macs from day one, which is just like a massive library. I know not every game on iOS is great, but there are definitely some absolute standouts. That also means that anything you can play on Apple Arcade on the iPhone or the uh, iPad will also play on the Mac, as well as on your TV and all the rest of it. So lots of lots of gaming coming in terms of triple a games the biggest thing that's going to make a difference is if the adoption rate goes up so the reason that a lot of triple a games don't come to the mac is not necessarily because of hardware issues or performance running them but in terms of the limited number of people that actually use macs for gaming the, the hardware is in general very similar now that boot camp is going though it's going to be harder for people to run Windows uh, native games on, on their new Macs. It might make a lot more sense now, especially if the adoption rate does go up, for more developers to bring their AAA games to the Mac. Hopefully that kind of answers your question. Obviously uh, Macs will be using Metal, so they're using direct access to the GPUs rather than using OpenGL or DirectX. Um, so there should be a little bit more power available on tap than you would expect with the same hardware. And into my notification squad. Now, today is very tricky for me, so I'm going to let Siri handle the first one. Polarni. Also, Lego Vlogger, Gomer Chawla, and Robert Hood. New members of the notification squad, thank you so much. If you would like a shout out like these guys, join the notification squad by subscribing to the channel, ringing the bell right down there, and you will get a shout out in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions that you would like me to answer on a show. Hashtag iCaveAnswers uh, down in the comments because We've got a we've got a product announcement coming up next week and the the news tends to get a little bit lighter this time of year because of that. See you tomorrow.